Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.24.2. In this episode, I have my Mercury mission underway, and I'm hoping to get enough science out of it so that I can unlock a new set of engines. I've taken a look at a tech tree before uh, starting out on this episode, and I, what I want is uh, some of the engines that we haven't tried before. In particular, there's the Mitsubishi LE7, I believe it is, which is the base, the core stage of the H2B rocket. And uh, besides that, also the Vulcane, the one that is used in the in the European space program with the Ariane rockets. So I want to try and unlock those, but that'll cost a thousand science. So that's uh, that's a lot. <laughs> And uh, we only have 20 science right now, so it's a long ways off. But uh, we've got a science junior, two goo containers, and uh, hopefully sending these over to Mercury, which is very difficult to get to, will yield us some serious science. If not, we might have to plan some other mission in order to get more science. And, of course, the reason I want to do that is because maybe we can launch out of uh, uh, Tanagashima, Japan, or maybe... Uh, with uh, the, uh, an Ariane-like rocket uh, from the European Space Center. So, so yeah, those are ideas. Since we, uh, well, since I've started this little uh, trend of uh, launching from other space centers, I'm I'm pretty confident that I've figured out uh, Baikonur. If I can if I can plot a trajectory to Mercury, uh, launching out of Baikonur, I think I think I've got that part now. Um, so I just want to uh, uh, see which location I like. Uh, uh, one thing about Baikonur is that it's a little bit too bright. <laughs> At noontime, the sun striking the very yellow surface uh, makes it glow very disconcertingly. So I, I just want the most scenic launch location, and so we're going to try some of those out, basically. Um, yeah, but uh, I want appropriate rockets. So we've got this sort of trajectory. Uh, wow, well, we can barely see the trajectory with, uh, with all the stuff I've got. Like that. Okay. So, time warping. And you can see I've configured my windows a little bit more. So, time warping to the maneuver node. This uh, burn is going to take a while, and uh, it looks like there's one thing I forgot to add. And uh, so under stages I have there, if I could get to that one, I want stage time. Stage time. Uh, let's go with stage time full throttle. That's usually what I want. Okay. It's important. And it looks like the stage time is 11 minutes, but that's for only 3,700 delta V. So probably we're pretty close to needing to start this burn, but look at where we are. I think we're going to have to do this burn in two bursts, but I don't see how we can do that. It's so long. Yeah, I mean, we can't be angled uh, 45 degrees away from the prograde vector. It's just not going to be very efficient, and then we're not going to have enough fuel, right? Because uh, this is a this is a difficult burn as it is, and we're very tight on fuel. You gotta wait until we're only 20 degrees away. Okay, let's start uh, planning our thing. Very unstable. Typical. Okay. Uh, I think I'm going to use the RCS system to settle it since we have so much RCS there. Uh, oh. uh, come on. Oh, no, I guess it's just, uh, is it thrusting on the other side or something? Well, it's uh, it's settled it down. I don't know where it was thrusting from, but I'll take it. Fortunately, it looks like we're burning out of our periapsis, so pretty close to it. So that's that's good.
in this case a periapsis is actually technically within the real solar system atmosphere which is interesting but not much drag you can see I've got atmospheric drag up here so in the interest of precision what I'm going to do is I'm going to see how much the burn does before we get to T minus zero on the node and then burn that much more after the node and then shut down the engine. How many relights do we have? Uh, plenty of relights there but we need to be able to settle the fuel down. So that shouldn't be a problem with the combination of RCS and the solid boosters. Okay, so I'll come back to you once this burn is close to being done. So we're getting ready for the end of this burn now. Uh, this is the first burn and then we're going to go around and do a subsequent burn in order to complete this maneuver. Looks like we're going to end up with a, about a 10 hour orbit. Okay, let's cut it there. Alright, so now we have a little trick here because we have to so I have to remember 3937.7 and I'm going to extend that maneuver node but you see the maneuver node goes to to a much larger number and what I want is 3937.7 and hopefully that will keep everything else all lined up for us no it doesn't <laughs> oh, look at that uh, our encounter is gone so we have to tweak this that is a Venus encounter that's not what we want oh there we go wow so the Venus encounter is not too far off Okay, well, uh, 21,000 it looks like. And maybe we can get a Venus swing by, though. Uh, I don't know what we could do there if we're actually going to do all the experiments at, at Mercury. And we're not carrying too much else, so... Ah, my home state. California right there. Uh, of course, Washington, Oregon up here. Normally flying out of Cape Canaveral, we don't uh, get to this latitude. Tough to say exactly when I should start this burn. Um... Yeah, a little bit tough to say. Well, it's very stable right now. Let's get a little bit closer. Okay, still stable? Nope, unstable now. That's fine, we need to use the solid boosters anyway. Okay. Okay, probably over Idaho and Montana right now. So here we are, uh, 12 seconds to this stage burning out. And one of the benefits of launching from a higher latitude, of course, is that we get to see more of the globe. And so here we are uh, passing over what will soon be Wisconsin and the Great Lakes here. So yeah, that's a definite plus. And uh, all right, let's go for separation. And ignition. No point having RCS on now. There's no RCS on this. No problems with the burn. Well balanced. Uh, burning on either side of the node fairly well. We're on... Uh, escape trajectory already 
of course, uh, that stage that we just discarded was meant to set us on either to uh, uh, lunar trajectory or escape trajectory, and it did that. So here we go, Lake Erie, Lake Ontario. Somewhere right around there is Niagara Falls. Continuing our sightseeing tour here. First, I think this is the first time I've uh, passed over the United States like this. So, New York State. New York City right there. Chesapeake Bay. Okay, looking good. Here we go. Uh, yeah. Looking very good. We've got uh, 300 meters per second left to burn, about 3,200 meters per second after that, and the mid-course plane change is 3,000. So we're right on it. We're not going to... We're going to have to figure out the mid-course plane change in order to get closer to Mercury. But right now, things are looking okay. Of course, uh, we are not f facing signal delay, so that is an uh, easier aspect to this Mercury mission than the previous one. But it also means that I'm, I'm not going to be shouting at my computer quite as much. So it's a good thing. Let's face it, uh, this is supposed to be having fun, not, not being frustrated out of your mind. Okay. Alright. Now Smarty SS is trying to turn me. Okay, so that's our mid-course plane change right there, which doesn't get us anywhere near Mercury now, because things are different. But we can fix that, hopefully. Okay, so we're currently coming in a very high pass over Mercury, uh, 75,000 kilometers. And I can't uh, fix any better than that from this maneuver node. I mean, I probably could, but it costs uh, too much. It would be prohibitive. So, and it's only really because we're uh, meeting Mercury at our ascending node that uh, we're even getting an encounter. You notice this is not uh, the home and transfer point. This is actually uh, somewhat different. And that's because we, we could meet at the home and transfer point. It's just that if we tried that, the mid-course plane change would be too much. So we're not doing that. And yeah, so that makes things a little bit more complicated. Also making, making things complicated is the fact that we seem to have a huge imbalance between MMH and N204. Uh, so some engine was not configured. The problem is we've got multiple things that require MMH and N204. We've got this SS engine and then we've got these one kilonewton thrusters. And I guess things were misconfigured for one or the other, I think. Uh, I, I can't imagine how it could be that big a gap, because really, um, anything that uses MMH N204 will basically have a 50-50 split between them. Uh, it's, uh, it's pretty close to 50-50. It shouldn't be this big a gap. So, a little bit confusing there. Not sure what went on. Okay, well, uh, we're going to have to try this uh, little maneuver, and hopefully it will get us to Mercury. Ah, darn it. Well, hopefully it's close enough. Here we go. At this point, I'm going to have to... Did I action group those other solar panels? Yes, I did. Okay, good. Let's get those out. There's an inclination change, which is why we're pointed, pointed like this. This is a problem, isn't it? Big mistake. It can't be a 10%. That's a 10% gap. You can tell uh, the MMH. We've got more than 10% extra MMH 
then the tank holds. But it can't be that. I mean, it can't be that the thruster uses, uh, what, 60-40 or even 55-45. Each fuel combination has an optimal mixture ratio between the between the fuels, though uh, sometimes temperature requirements make it so that uh, you use a slightly off optimal mixture. But uh, because maybe a combination of fuels at optimal will burn too hot for the thrust chamber or something like that. But but yeah, I mean it's usually pretty close to optimal for the mixture you know it's like the chemical formulas except if if you uh, break down the chemical formulas there's um, it's not quite uh, if you've ever seen a chemical formula between the reactants and the products you know uh, if you've been through chemistry uh, it's not exactly the amount that you would expect from that sort of formula because it's actually beneficial to send some more fuel out uh, it actually increase I think it increases the ISP if you actually uh, throw some extra fuel into the mixture but um, but yeah it's not usually pretty far from the optimal amount anyway we're going to be coming up on the staging here soon okay here we go staging and the one kilonewton thrusters Not much spare delta V. Gonna take smart ASS off and use SAS instead. Okay, time to be careful. Let's take that off. And there's a periapsis, excellent. As long as the periapsis is descending at a certain rate, I'll keep it going, but at a certain point it might be better to reserve fuel for a different burn later. Okay, it is uh, going down below the rate that I wanted to see. So uh, right now we're at 56,000 kilometers and it's not going to make it easy for me to create a maneuver node typical it's the purple line versus blue line thing okay well maybe maybe I can see what happens when I do some test burns uh, I doubt that uh, inclination burn would really help here yeah yeah stabilize physics So let's try the other burns. I hope I have I have infinite ignites on this stage, right? Yeah. All right, test burns. Okay, that's bad. That's good. Oh, that happens. So it uses a lot of MMH M204 just to light it. That's annoying. Okay, cutting it pretty up. It's starting to go up there. And probably another relight would just uh, ruin our fuel situation. I mean, well, we don't have we don't have a fuel situation. Um. Uh, but uh, I don't know where to test in order to get it closer to Mercury right now. So we're just going to have to get into Mercury's sphere influence. Alright, so see you there. Okay, so here we are. And all we can do is... Oop. Oh, it's giving me really weird close maneuver nodes. No, no. Well, that's uh, even more than we can actually do, so unfortunately we can't adjust too much here. Uh, really no point in doing this. 
We're going to be high over Mercury anyway. So, there it is. Let's observe the materials bay. Hello. Oh, there we go. Oh, uh, transmitting actually gives us four points. That's uh, that's very good. All right, let's do that. Yes, absolutely. Fortunately, we have plenty of electric charge, but it doesn't actually draw much of it. Okay, that's done. Got all the signs for that. Go away message. Come on. And... Wow, right-clicking not great here. Observe Mystery Goo. Takes a while. Okay, Goo feels right at home in space, high over Mercury, really. Let's transmit that. So we're well on our way to getting much more science. I thought we were supposed to get 250 odd from the Science Junior. Doesn't seem like we got all of it. Okay, right clicking is not happening today. I think I should... I think I should skip out for a sec and come back in because this isn't working right. All right. Hold on a sec. Okay, well, it's just not allowing me to access those. That's fine. Right-clicking is working fine now. When I right-click, it actually does something. There was a lot of me trying to click on stuff before and it not popping up with any message. Um, doesn't look like we have too much other science. Of course, I... Eve High Orbit Readings. Well, we... Sh we saw a sort of Eve pass, but I doubt we're going to get it. Let's uh, quickly see whether we this is close enough to Mercury. I doubt it's close enough to Mercury to get the near to Mercury reading, but let's see. I mean, it would be close enough to get the near to Earth reading because high over Earth is like 35,000 kilometers. But I don't think Moho works the same. Mer Moho slash Mercury works the same way. Connection has been great so far. Let's see. Oh, it is near. Okay, great. Transmit that. I swear we're not getting as much science as I think we should out of these, based on what they say they're gonna give me. Well, that one did fine. Okay. Well, that's all the science from this probe. There's no other scientific instrument. It has fulfilled its mission. All right. Well, what can I say? A successful mission. Let's see where it ends up after it exits uh, Mercury's sphere of influence. Uh, somewhat of a orbit like that. If we set Eva's target, ah, uh, very close. Not close enough though. But hmm, I think we we're probably too far out to uh, fix that. And with only 30 meters per second, it's unlikely. Let let me just try it. Okay. Well. Wow. Let's. <laughs> Anything this close to the sun costs a lot. Let's say... Yeah, there's no way. Hmm... Let me... Let, I, I'm just curious. Let me pass that point and see what happens afterwards. Because it only shows one little encounter like this at a time. Okay, so the game crashed as I was approaching this point. Let's try this again. Just want to see what happens after we... Wow, oh, it's really sticky. Oh, uh, it's auto-saving. Maybe that's the reason. Come on. 
Ah, uh, okay. Nothing interesting. All right, so, well, the Mercury mission was successful. We got our, it's not actually showing us our stuff right now. There's something wrong around here. Let's go back to the Space Center. Okay, there we go. So here we are, Baikonur, and uh, yep, everything is as you see it. We don't have the thousand signs that we need, but let's take a look at the tech tree. So what I wanted to unlock was this, and you can see here we would unlock the RD-170, which is uh, great. Those are for the boosters of the energy of vehicle. We haven't unlocked those. Uh, I think we have a version of that. But we haven't unlocked this one yet. The Mitsubishi LE-7A is the one I was talking about, the first stage of the H-2B, and uh, that would be interesting. Note that it has... Uh, it has uh, sort of a space shuttle-ish mix of uh, high sea level and high vacuum ISP. The Astrium HM-7B, which is the second stage of the Ariane rocket. I don't think, I guess we don't get the first stage yet, or did we already unlock it? Let me just take a look. Oh, here's the, no, that's a different one. Yeah, I guess we don't get the first stage of the Ariane rocket yet, but we would be able to launch a reasonable facsimile of a of a Japanese rocket. That's a really big second stage, five meters, uh, with only a sixty-five kilonewton thrust. That's pretty surprising. Anyway, so there are possibilities here. And that's why I wanted to unlock, but we can't go to that yet. So what I figure is we can uh, turn to another American facility like uh, Wallops in Virginia and uh, launch out of that. I haven't tried that before. See what it looks like. Oh, uh, oh, I have other parts, don't I? I installed uh, Infernal Robotics because I was sort of missing it in the previous episode. And I think, uh, yes those parts ended up here so let me quickly research those so we're going to send another probe to get the remaining science we need about 600 more than 600 science and I figured the best thing to do is finally try again to send a probe to Jupiter and I think that would get us our science It'll, we will want to pack as much science as possible so perhaps uh, even more than one science junior and crew container we'll use a heavy rocket and it might have to be a new rocket, we'll see. So that is the, that's the plan. I'm going to try another Jupiter mission. We have the RTGs, so that is going to be the next episode. And the goal is to unlock the next sequence of uh, rockets, advanced rocketry. All right, so thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments, suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.